Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamental concepts of software testing. And we are in chapter five talking about the test management, continuing ahead with our next segment, which is 5.4 risk management. And here we will not be talking exactly a deep dive into what is risk analysis process, but we'll be giving you a quick introduction to what is risk and how exactly it fits into the process of testing lifecycle and what kind of basic outline we can understand from what is risk all about and how do we mitigate them through our testing process. Well, to get started with, the very first thing here is to define the word risk. Now, certainly risk is given with different definitions, but we do have a generic definition to risk that it is an uncertainty which may or may not happen, right? It's not necessary that a risk will always happen. For example, if you have to go for shopping today and you are anticipating that it might rain and can, you know, kind of ruin your plan of going for shopping out today, it's just a risk and it may or may not happen. It may po be possible that the risk is getting executed or not. It's not necessary that it will always get executed, right? So risk is an uncertainty which you don't want to happen, but it may or may not happen. And you are trying to anticipate them in your project, in your product. Now, of course, there are two types of risk here which we just got introduced to. Uh, we're talking about the product risk which are related to the core functionalities or quality characteristics of the application and on the other hand the entire process of building up that product and that process if you have any risk you call it as project risk now these project risks are related to several activities documentations people uh, you know sort of coordination etc which happens within the project and we call them as project risk so the very first thing here is to identify the possible risk in your projects and product and classify them accordingly under their category. The second important thing is once you have identified the risk, you try to assess the level of risk because without having a determination of what is the level of risk, you may not be able to understand that how much effort needs to be put in order to mitigate the risk. For example, uh, it might rain you know, today and can hamper your plan of shopping could be an ordinary risk too, because you can always go for shopping tomorrow. But if it is something critical about tomorrow that you have to attend an interview or you may have to go for a wedding to attend, then your risk becomes more critical, right? So it, it just certainly determines the level of risk where you understand that what's the, you know, uh, two parameter of each risk that is impact and likelihood. The impact here certainly tells me that if this risk happens, what would be the impact on the product or the project respectively? For example, the outcome is you're shopping for going for an interview and you certainly need uh, shoes to be there with you, right? And you don't have shoes and you want to go shopping today. And if it rains, you will not be able to go out and you may have a bad impression in the interview for sure. Right. So the point is, one is impact that if this risk happens, what kind of you know harm the end user, if it is a product risk or the project, if it is a project risk, will have from the risk. On the other hand, we do have another parameter which is called as likelihood, which means the probability of that event to happen. How, how much do you really expect that this risk will happen? It may depend on the frequency of use of that infected part of the application or that particular activity. Again, relation to product and project risk. Product risk are related to core functionality. So any one particular feature may have a risk and it depends on the frequency of use of user on that particular functionality. Similarly for project risk, if you talk about the examples of documentation being poor, environment not ready on time, right? Uh, certain specific people like principal architects not available in the early phases of the life cycle to clarify your questions or doubts about the product, right? So these could also be a kind of, you know, uh, likelihood would be determined here that how, uh, you know, what is the probability of this is to happen. So the point here is the level of risk is determined by combination of two parameters. One is impact and second is likelihood. Again, given that you're getting started with the you know QA understandings, you don't really have to deep dive here. 
you really need someone experienced in risk analysis process to do this job. But yes, as a tester, you might be required to contribute to these processes, right? To assist them. Hey, from a testing perspective, I think this is a risk. From a testing perspective, I think this is the impact if this risk happens, right? So that's where you need to know what exactly this is all about. But until unless you gain some experience of few years, you may not be really required to identify a risk or plan for the mitigation, etc. Once you have identified the risk, you have determined the level of risk, you know the significance and prioritization of your risk items. There could be risk priority one item, there will be risk priority four item or three item, right? So one, two, three, four, five is the five scale parameter which you use to rate your risks. And accordingly, you put your effort. Now, how do you put your effort? That's what you call it as risk-based approach. That means the amount of testing required to be done in that particular area is directly proportional to the level of identified risk. If I have a high priority risk identified, high level of risk identified, I would do more testing in that area to make sure the risk doesn't happen. If it is slightly less level of risk, less priority risk, then you would do comparatively less testing in that area than that of a high priority risk, right? So the risk-based approach is all about determining the amount or effort of testing dependent on the level of risk. Now, what exactly it is? In a risk-based approach, the result of product risk analysis are used to determine the various test techniques to be employed. That means what techniques are relevant for such risks to you know, do better testing. Determine the particular levels and types of testing to be performed. For example, if there are some performance risks identified, then we must do performance testing. If you think your system could be weak in the terms of getting hacked, then security testing is a must, right? So levels can be determined based on the risk identified. And same way, the types of testing, what do you think is like retesting, regression testing, white box, black box, which would be more relevant at which level you can determine that. Determining the extent of testing to be carried out, which simply means how much testing would be enough uh, for this particular risk. Prioritizing testing in an attempt to find the critical defects as early as possible. If you think these kind of defects can be identified with help of static testing, then try to prioritize your activities through reviews of the work products and ask questions to the author so that you get all that clarity what you need much earlier in the life cycle. Also to determine whether any activity in addition to testing could be employed to reduce the risk. Could be like you know talking about uh, casual inter interaction with the system like ad hoc executions, inexperienced uh, uh, training or ramp up sort of things which could help you to mitigate the risk like making your team available much earlier in the life cycle could also be a factor involving your business users right in all your discussions all your you know demonstrations could help you reduce the risk of acceptance by the business users could be another thing so it's not just limited to testing activity if you think there's any other extra activity which could lead to mitigation of the risk you can employ them too right so putting it all, all together the risk management here is just to give you a quick introduction to what is the risk how do you determine the level of risk and how testing is going to vary depending on the level of risk right so the deep dive you would understand as you grow up with your experience in the industry and start interacting with different types of products you will gain more understanding about this so that's all from this particular tutorial team uh, I hope you have got a good clarity on it. We'll be coming back with another tutorial to talk about the examples of risk on project and product. So stay tuned for that. So that's all from here. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.